Hey y'all, Nani here. Welcome back to my channel. Oh, this is freaking awesome. Hi. Let's try that again. Hey y'all, Nani here. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Hi. You know the name of the channel, right? Okay, good. Um, because, uh, you know me, I don't like to edit. So, uh, I can't tell you guys how many videos I have made where there was something in there that I needed to edit. And I was just like, eh, <laughs> just tank it. <laughs> because uh, the whole editing thing. And it's funny because I know I told you guys I used to be a... Um, a uh, photographer, wedding photographer, and I would edit thousands and thousands of photos. Um, I usually spent four hours a day doing that. It was exhausting, but it was fun. Like, I mean, that was my favorite part was the editing and like all the magic you could create uh, just by editing, you know, the photos. Um, are, are you going to stop or no? You're just going to keep on going? You do you, Karen. You do you, honey. You do you. Wow. Wow. The freaking entitlement that I just witnessed is unbelievable. I mean, I, I know there's worse. I'm sorry. There's, there is worse. But, um, you know how you're supposed to be in like, you, we drive on the right lane, right? So, and I'm not to offend any Karens. I'm so sorry. Again, I don't know how that became a thing. And I usually do try to pick many different names. Um, but that's what came out. So, my apologies. Most Karens, I'm sure, are absolutely wonderful. I've known some in my life that were wonderful. So, there you go. I've actually never known any bad Karens. Anyway. So, um, we're in like this shopping area. You know, where everything's like connected and... So you've got your roads, but they're just the shopping area roads where you're going to turn into the parking lot, you know? And I was backing out, um, and I saw this SUV coming, and it was just going probably a good 20 miles an hour. I usually keep it to 15, 10 or 15 which I know I'm a slow grandma, but honestly, like little kids, elderly people, people that don't like, why do I have to run into the store? Because you can't just slow your damn car down. Do you know what I mean? Like you're in a, a outlet parking lot kind of thing, like a store outside mall situation. So slow the fuck down. Like, where are you going? <sighs> it's just nothing, nothing irritates me more than that. So, well, I mean, I guess there probably are things, but, oh, I guess we could call this my first rant video. Should we? Can we? I guess so. I guess we could call this my first rant video. I think I ran out of categories on my playlists because I tried to, the video that I made yesterday about Poppy, the troll doll, um, was, uh, I wanted to make a new category called current events but it wouldn't so I just had to put it in let's talk about that also or let's talk about it um I need to correct something uh with the, the poppy thing the movie I saw was the original troll doll movie that's the movie I was referring to not this worldwide tour movie because I think it just came out I have not seen that I'm not going to go see it because hippo is not at that point He's not at that point yet where, oh, I want to go see that movie, Nani. The moment he is, of course, we will go see that movie safely and smartly. Uh, but um, he's not into that right now. His attention span won't allow for it. And I really don't want to sit through a movie with a mask on because I cannot breathe. And so I would end up probably having to take it off. I'm not going fast enough. Speed it up, Grandma. I'm talking to myself. Um, so I would probably have to end up taking it off, which would increase my risk. But it's like, 
when you can't breathe, you can't breathe. And when I, I have gotten to that point before with the shortness of breath, it got so bad that before I knew what I had, before I knew it was small fiber neuropathy related, before I knew I had small fiber neuropathy, I thought I had some kind of lung problem and was dying because I, I used to be a smoker of like 20 some odd years, double, uh, two, two packs a day. And, um, hello, anyone? Squirrels? Good for you guys. We got some cross trainer peeps over here. I, I, I mean, this, there's, oh my God, there's this one woman. She looks like she's like 65. Oh, I feel like a loser. Oh my God. Oh. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. It's like 88 degrees outside right now. You can barely breathe because of the humidity. And then today, the temperature is going to top out at 103. Yeah. And um, the heat advisory is basically just stay indoors. Which is, that's all most of us, the non-crazy people. Uh, I know there's some people that cannot stand to be uh, kept indoors. Like, I, and I get it. I, I don't, I don't uh, relate because... I'm just not an outdoor girl. Like, I do love the outdoors. I don't necessarily want to be in it all the time. Um, but anyway, so I made my correction. I, the movie I was speaking of was not the Worldwide Tour movie, but it was the original Poppy Trolls movie. Like, Trolls. Um, but the doll, of course, was with the World uh, Tour. Uh, anyway, back to my Karen rant. So, I am like, okay, so I'm parked this way, and my daughter's storefront is here, okay? And parallel to my daughter's storefront is a road right behind me. It's not really a road. It's a store road, like a storefront road, right? Outdoor mall type road. So it goes storefront, parking spaces, my car, uh, store roads, and then back here are one of those little concrete bumper things, and then more parking spaces. So I'm backing out. Karen is way back there, okay, way back. Okay, like a quarter of a mile back. Okay. I know she sees me. She is going probably about 20 miles an hour. Okay. I'm backing up, backing up, backing up. So I get to this point where I can tell, like I'm backing up and I'm looking and I'm like, if I go as far back as I want to before I turn this way, She's going to hit me because she, she doesn't look like she's going to stop or like she cares. And I'm not playing chicken with Karen. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't do that. So, she just kept on coming. There was no hesitation. There was no pausing. There was nothing. I usually do like, oh, oh, oh can I go? Uh, you know, most decent people do. No. No, this bitch just kept right on going without a second thought. Did not give a rat's ass. I had to pull all the way back in. So, it's just... <sighs> Rude ass drivers. They just make me nuts. Like, absolutely nuts. Because... I would say that is the most, the biggest part of your day where you, you have to engage with other human beings, uh, the most human beings all at the same time doing the same activity. Okay. And so that requires cooperation from all of us, right? From everyone doing their part. And if you follow the rules, the way they were made and written up, everyone will be safe and also money like I don't I don't want to deal with insurance and the cost of 
this and that and the other and la la la. Listen, I'm fully covered, okay? I am fully covered to the hilt in insurance, but you still there's still a deductible that you have to pay. The hassle, not having a car. Now, mine also covers me for a rental. Because the older you get, the more insurance you have. It's, you know, because you get smarter. Um, I, I've heard, I've read that your brain isn't even fully developed until you're 25. So three only, three out of the, of my four kids finally have their brains fully developed. Uh, Bailey is the only one whose little brain hasn't fully developed yet. And that, I mean, that's not her fault. Nobody's brain is fully developed till 25, right? Uh, but she's an excellent driver. Uh, might be a little overly cautious like her mama. Um, but she adjusts very well. Like, she knows how to kind of recognize it and adjust. And, of course, the more she does it, the better she's going to be. Um, but she really started driving, a, like, a lot, a lot when she was in her early, middle 20s. Like, she's, well, she's 22 now. So, I guess when she's turned 20, she started driving more consistently, like, every day. Um... Uh, as with me, I was 16. Like, the day I turned 16, I had my license in my hand, and I started driving. Um, so I was really driving from 15. Um, things were different back then, man. When you were in the 80s, when you were an 80s kid, you didn't want anything more but just to get as far away from your fucking parents as you could. You know what I mean? Like, didn't mean you didn't love your parents. Didn't they, didn't mean they weren't great. But, you know, you need to get the hell away from your parents. Like, you get real tired of someone telling you to wake up. Telling you to empty the dishwasher. Telling you to do this. Telling you to do that. My mother had this. And I'm sure everybody had a chore that they absolutely hated to do more than anything else. So, uh, tell me what yours was. Mine, my mom had this, um, my mom's extremely anal and it's only gotten worse over the, she was kind of normal, kind of a normal person. Uh, you know, clean, cleanliness, a clean person, but not obsessively anal, right? But she had this, uh, like, shelf. More like a glass, okay, a glass bookcase. So, there was no backing. So, it had little shelves, okay? And then the sides, I guess, that held each glass piece were mirrored Okay, so again, must be, you know, fingerprints, all that stuff. Every inch of it was glass. Then she had all these little knickknacks. The whole glass thing, I think it had like five or six shelves. And then she probably had like ten knickknacks per shelf. Each one had to be dusted and wiped off. And then each shelf had to be perfect. Okay. Well, you know, me, I was like, uh, now when I looked at it, I didn't see anything. But when my mom looked at it, she had some kind of, kind of x-ray vision because she would be like, well, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? You didn't even clean this, did you? And I'm like, I legit cleaned it. Like I may not have done it to your standards, but I did clean it. And she'd be like, well, clean it again. And I just didn't like understand like what aren't you seeing that's and now I get it I get it now I get it mom and I'm sorry because I am not anal at all she's still anal I am not anal I'm really more on the sloppy side sloppier than I would like to be though um the the uh slop, the grade of the sloppiness depends on what time of year it is so when it's super hot out, it's it can get bad. It can get sloppy, right? Like, uh, you know, clothes probably aren't going to get put away. They're just going to kind of sit in a stack on 
the on my desk or my dresser and I'll just get them from there like I'm not putting all my clothes away like it's just too too hot it takes too much energy and I'm already drained from the heat um, every day we have a heat index today it's gonna get it to 103 which means it feels like it's 107 and they tell you like just being even being inside with the heat index being bad is bad for you which I did not know but I learned that and I'm like what the what the fuck are we supposed to do inside like and my ass is in a trailer I'm not even in a real house so I have way fewer layers of protection you know what I mean like okay, I just gotta do a check you know what I mean and you know what I mean um so anyway I already fin I finished my Karen rant. My Karen rant, right? First coffee I've had in a while, so I'm a little speedy. I haven't even, like, I used to have a routine when I had a job. Anyway, um, I had a routine. Get up every morning, make my coffee, have my cute little... Velveeta biscuits, orange cranberry flavor, so good. Please get them and try them and let me know what you think. Um, and now it's like, I don't know, I just don't make the coffee anymore. I'm like, who cares? So sad, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I think I did finish my Karen story. Uh, oh, and then like ranting about drivers, it's like, I've seen a rise. Now, I know a lot of that is just me getting older, right? And when you're older, you care more about your things. You care more about other people, right? Like, you really... Things are just more in focus when you're my age rather than when you're younger. You're just thinking, oh, well, if I bump somebody, it'll be fine. Nothing. Whereas now, I realize even if it's just a bump, something horrible could happen, right? Like, you could cause them to careen off the road and then a big 18-wheeler hits them or or whatever. Or somebody comes by to help you and then they get hit by another car who's using their damn phone while they're driving. And I mean like, hey, what's up? FaceTiming or like just texting like this. Like, I drive by people and I see them doing this Okay, their eyes are freaking covered and they're texting. Okay, they are texting. Huh. Okay, sorry. I was about to start yelling. And I know that's not cute. And we're breathing and we're calm. Okay. It's amazing. Breathing really does work. I feel a little bit high right now. Anyway, okay, so, um, I've been watching, I just got introduced to something yesterday, just through, you know how sometimes YouTube will just recommend something to you, that's how, um, uh, what was it, some channel, like, Manny MUA kind of ended up in my feed like a few years back and that's how I got hooked on him like I saw one video it's all I had to see because he's precious and um, so every t now and then YouTube will do you a huge favor and just drop something into your feed and yesterday uh, I started watching because they they popped up I don't know if I'm gonna say this right barn dominiums barn dominiums Barnes, okay, which is like a kit. So it's a prefab kit, like the pieces are already prefabricated and it comes in a kit, like, but the kit is humongous and it includes like all of your kitchen cabinets, all of your kitchen flooring, all of your kitchen this and that. Uh, you know, your. The, the the bones to your entire house. Uh, I guess it's like what some people would use as a barn, like on their land, okay? 
other people are turning into homes, which to me are just like fancy trailers. Like I look at it and I'm like, it's just, it's a fancy trailer. Like, except these are placed on the foundation. One guy did say, he said, sometimes they're going to have to be on uh, stilts. He said, some aren't. I don't really know the difference. I do know if I was in a place that got flooded a lot, I would do stilts. We get flooded a lot in Texas. Just It just happens. And so I would uh, do that. We have stilts. I mean, obviously, it's a trailer. So, But um, otherwise, our living room would be in water half the time. Um, so, but they're called barn dominiums. And there's, that's one, um, name of the company, I guess, that makes them is barn dominium, I guess. And then there's other companies that do the same thing, but they're called something different. But I ran into barn dominium, so I've been watching them. And apparently they sell them, um, they sell the home with, uh, you can get one for $114,000, well, $115,000 with two acres of land, or one with uh, uh, five acres of land, and it's $145,000. And I know that you have to build it out. And you have to get the electricity done. You have to get help with the foundation. You know, all of that. I know all of that adds up. But I'm I'm still like, damn. You know, that's not bad. Um, but I think Kelly's wanting, really wanting to do the RVing. So, you know, when we're old and shit. So, we're probably not going to end up having one of them barn, barn dominiums anyway. But we ain't getting no van. I can tell you that right now. I'm not living in a van. I'm going to live in a damn RV because I'm going to have a bathroom at all times. I'm going to have a bed. I'm going to have a kitchen. Okay? I'm going to have all that shit all the time. And it's not going to be one of them things where, oh, well, you're just going to have to squat in the grass somewhere. No, I'm not doing that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So, anyway... Um, Lucinda says hello. She is really doing her thing today. Just really going for it. So she says hi. She's thinking about starting her own channel. Uh, you know, we'll see. I'm talking to her about it. I don't, I don't think it's a great idea. Because I'll probably have to end up helping her with it. But anyway, um... It's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Honestly. Why? Why? Get on down there, girl. Stay down there. And then... I had to bring baby girl to work, which is why I'm in the car. Um, and my cat was like, do you ever have your cat... Like forcibly lie on your body so Oliver loves to lay on my chest um Poe it does not roll like that I wish he did because he's got the softest silkiest fur um but that's cool you know um he just likes to be pet he's a little skittish unfortunately I don't know why or how he became skittish but it's a part of his DNA, I guess. He's always been that way. Uh, and we've had him ever since they were teeny tiny babies. Uh, he and Oliver are actually brothers. Um, from the same mama kitty. But anyway. Um, yeah, he was laying on me. He had climbed up like five minutes before I had to leave. And so, I knew he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to want to get down. And so, he just, like, stiff. I don't know how they do it. Like, he doesn't claw me. You know, I if I were a cat, I would just, like, dig my claws in and be like, no, bitch. I'm going to tear your shit up if you try to get me off of you, you know. At least tear the clothes up or something. But he's just, like, 
turns himself into a magnet and I cannot peel him off. Every time I, I get him, his body up just a little bit, he, he goes straight back down. I had to just peel him off today. Oh man. I was like, Oliver, dude, he's so obsessed. Like you have, you know, you have one of those cats or a dog where it's like, you know, when you're a mom and you know, when you have kids and if you're a mom and you're, you're a first time mom, so you're pregnant right now, just know this, uh, your days of going to the bathroom alone are over probably, well, until they leave until they're grown up enough to where they don't care. Um, And for a while there, I was able to go to the bathroom by myself once they kind of, you know, got older. But now I've got this cat who will not let me go anywhere without him. Uh, every single time I get up to go anywhere, he has to go with me. But it's like this timing situation where I don't know if he's trying to trip me and kill me. Or if he's just following me. Because we have like a little fence lattice thing that we put up between the door and our bathroom which is where we keep our kitty boxes because you know dogs like to eat cat poop I don't know why it's disgusting Paloma has never done that but we didn't want to take any chances so we just put the lattice up plus she will and she has done it before and I give them just a big vat like the box of food is probably like this wide on um, both sides. Okay, it's a perfect square. So, a butt ton of food. And next thing I know, there's a Paloma sized hole in this food because she's eaten all of it. So, um, but we put this lattice up, and so I have to always like. I'll stop and then take a step over because there's been many times, even though I know it's there, it's hard for me to lift my leg, which I think I've mentioned. Um, and so I have to really concentrate, make sure I lift it up high enough. It's not like it's super high, but Oliver will not go over, like jump over the little thing until I'm at least halfway over. It's almost like he thinks, Ha, huh, I'm going to trick you, and when you get in there, I'm going to shut the door. I, and that's not something I've ever done, so I don't know what his problem is, but it's like, it feels a little suspect to me, like he might be trying to kill me. I don't know. Um, but he's cute, so I just let it slide. Uh, I'm so tired, you guys. Oh, Lord. I woke up this morning. This is how I know I'm in a... A, uh, what's the word? You know, the, the thing where you, when you don't feel good, you know? Oh, I'm in a flare. This is how I know I'm flaring. I mean, basically, I'm in a flare the entire, uh, entire summer. Uh, I'm not doing it bad, badly enough to where I couldn't take baby girl to work. This is for first time that I've been able to take her to work. I don't remember the last time I took her. It'll be one of these videos in here. That was the last time. Um, but because I did this, my body will probably be like no bueno for the next week. I don't know. Um, Hippo wanted to stay this weekend and I had to say no because I'm just not physically I'm not there yet excuse me oh my gosh I'm also way tired I have my first phone interview today I mean not today sorry I have my first first phone interview uh, in eight years. 
okay, because I was at my last company for eight years. Still bitter. Um, and, of course, with them I did a phone interview. Haven't done one since, even though I've been out of work for six months because no one's come a-knocking. Finally, I'm building some traction. Finally getting, because... You know, yeah, they're saying like, oh, there's tons of jobs available, but they're jobs for younger people. You know what I'm saying? For people that maybe don't need to work every single day or can work very odd hours like like a night shift or that kind of stuff. Like, I am not doing any of that. I'm not working a night shift. Um... All of that stuff. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and I got plenty of sleep. But this is just me. Um, but I woke up this morning with chills. It's just, it's so funny because last night I was sweating like all the places where you know my skin touches so like when I do this I guess my gobbler kind of hangs down and so I get what I call neck sweat right here which is so hideous and then you know the elbow sweat all that all the places that I touch are sweating and it's like I'm just sitting in my bedroom I've got two fans blowing in my face Plus the air conditioner on. One of them's a big, old, big like this, like this big around, maybe bigger. This big a circumference, okay. On a table at the very end of my bed. So here's the bed. Here's the bed. This is the end of the bed. This is the fan, okay. And here's my face, <laughs> okay. And right here is a shelving unit or whatever, and there's another fan, which, this is me, from that angle is like that, right? Blowing in my face. But it's a mini one. I left my other mini one at the cabin that we went to. <sighs> but it's like an hour and a half away. It's not worth it to go back and get it. I'm sorry. It's just not for as old as that fan is the energy that it would take. I, I gauge things not by cost of gas or miles on the car or whatever. What's most important to me is what am I going to spend my energy or my spoons on? Cause spoons are energy, right? I'm not spending my spoons on going to get a black fan that I can go get at Walmart for like 10 bucks to replace the one I've already had for like a few years now that's, you know, all dusty and I mean, I clean them out. I, su I do the sucky thing where I suck them out and it sounded a little weird <laughs> where I suck the, the little fluffy dusty things. You know what I'm saying? Where it builds up. Anyway, everybody gets them on their ceiling fan. You kind of forget about your ceiling fan. And then you get up there and you're like, oh shit. And you have like a layer of dust that you can peel off, you know, that's just sitting on your fan. Or if you forget about it long enough, it, it'll just start flying off and all this stuff comes down. I don't think that's ever happened to my mother. Not, not not even one time. I don't think it's happened to my mother. There's probably some of you watching that are like, that's also never happened to you. And now you think I'm just a disgusting piece of shit. And that's okay. You know, I get it. I get it. But I do the best I can. You know, back when it was the, one of the first videos I made where I talked about, um, I used to be very anal retentive about keeping my room clean, my bedroom clean, because that's where I live. You know, that's my, I eat there. I don't, I don't cook there. Um, I do do a little hillbilly trick, 
you know, because I'm from Louisville, Kentucky originally, so it's in my blood. So my husband calls me a hillbilly. Uh, and um, by the way, do y'all know Up Church? I don't know what his first name is, but uh, Kelly just re recently introduced me to his music, and I love it. It's like country rap. It's so I think sometimes it's just country where he just sings country songs, but then sometimes he raps with it. It's so good. It's so good, y'all. That would be great cleaning music if I cleaned right now, but I'm not cleaning because it's too fucking hot. So, somebody else can clean. It ain't gonna move me. Uh, where was I going with this? I know I was saying something important. Oh, I was like, yeah, some of y'all probably have never had the, the uh, ceiling fan dust nuggets fall on you. Uh, you know. But I have, so that's just me. Um, not all the time, but I did used to, uh, before I got sick, I would probably once a month clean the van that, th ooh, ow. Ah, I just bit on my thing too. My cough dropped too hard. Um, when I cleaned my ceiling fans, is when I would also vacuum my walls and do all the baseboards and all of that. And like behind the TV, all of that stuff. My God, my throat is killing me right now. Oh my God. Sorry. Um, it feels like everything down here that works my throat and it's all connected, you know, to my ear and everything. Hurts. Like, the throat mechanisms, the voice box, the thyroid, the, even though I, you know, but still, it's here. It's right here. Uh, the thyroid inside my ear, all of that freaking hurts. Ugh. Probably because I've been talking, but shit, you know. I used to talk for a living. I spent eight hours a day talking. <clears throat> right now, that shit hurts real bad. I mean, it hurts whether or not I talk. So, it's kind of like, who cares? Also, I have not taken my pain meds today. Um, I did. I took my patch. So, usually what I do in my routine is I wake up, I take my thyroid... And then I uh, take my patch because I can't eat or drink anything. I mean, eat anything really uh, for 30 minutes after I've taken my pat. Or I mean, my thyroid. So that's a good time for me to put my patch in because I can't eat anything when I have the patch in. So then I'll lay back down and I'll fall asleep. And this morning I woke up with chills, like just really bad chills. So I got up, I turned my big fan off, went into my closet, put a sweater on. Did my whole bathroom thing, came back, got into bed, snuggled up all the way under the covers. And I mean like where I'm completely under the covers. I'll take them and tuck them up under my bun. And then I just fell asleep with my hand. I've been doing that a lot. Like I'm so tired where I'll be using my phone for something. And the next thing you know, I'm just like out. Oh my God. Oh. Goodness gracious. I think it's because I'm not having a routine. Um, I think also not having a routine is, is well, okay. Here's what I think. I think because, you know, I've had a lot of weight gain. A medication does do that. A lot of the reason for my weight gain is Lyrica, the gabapentin. Um, I think those are the only two meds that cause weight gain. I think. There might be other meds that like cause you to retain water, but I think in terms of just weight gain... Uh, it's the Lyrica and the Gabapentin. Um, 
Uh, and then the Ambien. The Ambien, which I, my alter ego after I take Ambien, her name's Amber, because she does not. She does not care. She's the bitch that would keep driving in the parking lot. Luckily, Amber doesn't drive. Amber doesn't have a car, nor does she have access to one. Um, my husband hides all the keys and stuff like that because even though he's there to watch me, like, uh, we just want to take all the possible safety measures that we can because I don't want Amber to get up and be like, oh, keys. You know, uh, that's never happened. I don't think it will ever happen, but I can guarantee it won't ever happen if there's no keys to be found. So my husband takes possession of all that. Um, Uh, what was I going to say? I have no idea. Um, and I do not take my meds until, like, whenever I have Hippo over, I don't take my meds until Hippo is asleep. Once Hippo's asleep, he stays asleep. That boy does not wake up. Ever. Uh, but Gozi is there. Uh, that's grandpa name. Goes, he's there to assist if he does wake up and maybe need to go to the bathroom or whatever. And we've told him, like, if you ever wake up and you need anything, you just get Gozy. Because Kel Kelly wakes up like that. Um, with or without my meds, I'm, I, it's just, I'm slow to do anything. You know, I'm like, I'm a sloth. That's like my spirit animal. Along with bunnies and squirrels. You know, otters. Oh my God, who doesn't love an otter? Uh, <sighs> watching those videos, all that stuff, so fun, 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 fun. Um, there's something on Netflix I was wanting to watch called Tiny Creatures, and it was like like a little deer mouse or like a little. I think it's in Australia where it's like real skittery, fast skittery, and he's got like a long tail. And like at the end of the tail, it's like he had, it's like this. <laughs> it's like straight kind of coarse hairs at the tip of his tail. I don't know what they're called, but I think they're from Australia. And I think they're kind of bouncy, like jumpy. Anyway, girl, you put your cough drop in. Shit. Um... But there was something I was right in the middle of telling y'all. And as usual, oh, I woke up. So, this morning, I woke up with chills. Um, no fever, but this is how I know when I'm flaring or ready to I possibly start getting into the big flare zone. Uh, is when I get start getting chills and my temperature goes up because normally my temperature is between 96.5 and 97 um, flat uh, or like 97.2 um, but when it gets up in the 99 100 range uh, and I start having chills then I know I'm not it's not going to be good the rest of the week's not going to be good so, I am glad that, uh, oh, I was saying I was offered Hippo for this weekend, but I just couldn't do it. I had to say no, which I've never, ever said no. I feel horrible for saying no. I feel like the worst grandmother on the face of the earth for saying no. But, um, I know it would only make me physically worse t to care for him. I would not be taking care, good care of him because I can't even take care of myself when I'm in that state, which means Gozi would be taking care of him, which is fine, absolutely fine. Gozi takes perfect care of Henry, but I also want to take really good care of him. Um, and and he wants me to be a part of this whole thing. Like, he doesn't want Nani to be just off in the shadows, not 
participating and he doesn't understand when I'm like, okay, I need a minute or not. He's not feeling great. I need to go lay down. You know, he doesn't understand, you know, he, to him, he's just like, um, I'm here now. So <laughs> let's go. Um, and so I just want to give him the best of me that I can. So, um, just knowing I, I'm not up for it. Plus I do have that phone interview with like an actual company on Monday. This is the first real company, like actual job, um, that's made any contact with me finally after six months. Right. Uh, and like I said, I think most of the jobs that were out there were jobs for younger people. Um, where they don't mind, you know, like getting off at nine or 11 at night, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, or some are do even jobs working overnight, like a night shift or, you know, I'm just not those. No. So this is the first time it was like an eight hour day. They were offering benefits all this stuff on my checklist. So I have a phone interview with them on Monday. Um, so now I definitely 100% have to color my hair. See, it's not going to happen today because I'm not feeling great. Um, but sorry. Uh, uh, let's see so today. Today's Wednesday. So I'll try to get it done by tomorrow. And then I want to like, you know, everything you should do to prepare for an interview, research the company, what are they about, you know, what do they do, um, what kind of ratings do they have, um, what, what, what kind of, do they offer a service, do they offer a product, uh, come up with questions, you should always have questions to ask your interviewer, um, broader questions for the phone interview and then more of a deep dive kind of set of questions for the in-person interview though I guess there won't be an in-person interview oh, it's a whole new world a whole new world okay I'm sorry I love to uh, sing all the Disney songs as operatic as I possibly can and as loud as I can, uh, me and Bailey, uh, when, she, when she's here, we'll do that. And it's so fun <laughs> and it drives my husband absolutely bonkers. Okay. He can't stand it cause we'll do it in the car too. And, uh, or we'll, you know, put our New Jersey accent on while he's driving and we'll be like, Oh my God, so any bay, you know? And then we'll just have a whole conversation that's all ad-libbed. And he's like, I just want silence. Can we just have silence? You know, you can tell we're driving him crazy, but he won't say anything. He's too nice. So sometimes I'll get him off the hook and stop. And sometimes not. Sometimes you just got to do what you're going to do because it's fun and we're theatrical people. Me and Bailey anyway. Um... So I have that going on. So that's also like, it sucks when you have a chronic illness because it seems like everything adds to your stress level, which adds to your pain level. And it sucks because it just makes you feel like a complete wimp because everything that you do, no matter how big or how small, you have to think about all of it. And when you're first starting out with your illness, you don't know what to think about and you find yourself in trouble. Like, oh shit, maybe going to the state fair without a wheelchair or something wasn't the best idea uh, because my leg hurt. My legs hurt about two minutes after I start walking uh, and then five to 10 minutes later, I'm crying. So, you know, um, those are the kinds of lessons that you learn. Uh, and so 
even something as small as a phone interview. There's a lot that go for me anyway. Uh, there's a lot of preparation that goes into that um, because that's I've always been very successful in the past at least at getting jobs um, but I've never gone for a job with a chronic illness the last time I got a job was eight years ago and uh, when I applied for the job I did not um, have a chronic illness. I mean, that I was aware of, right? Nothing was really wrong with me. Like, um, I had some shortness of breath and some memory problems, uh, that were just starting to worry me a little bit. Like, hmm, mostly the memory problems. It was like, what's going on? Cause I, I used to be like, oh, I was sharp, you know, sharp as a tack. And, uh, clever and always very quick with the comeback, you know, like someone could say something and I would just be like, boop, bop, 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 bing, bada, bing, you know, and, um, I could just jive with somebody like that for hours, you know, ad-libbing and being funny and silly. Um, and yes, I do do that with Bailey, uh... But there's a lot of the times with her, I'll even forget. I was like, oh, what were we talking about? You know, and she just laughs like, we were talking about blah, blah, blah. And I was like, we were? Because I'll just have no recollection of it. Um, so that is one thing that worries me about the phone interview because I am worried that they're going to, obviously, I'm going to write, you know, take notes. So I'll have that. Um, but I just worry that they're going to, I think I got every job I ever applied for. Like whenever I would do an interview, like we got the job. All I had to do was get the interview and I knew I was going to get the job. There was one job I didn't get. Um, I cannot fathom why. Uh, and I'm not trying to be like. Oh my God, I'm so perfect. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know. They didn't give me feedback. And it could be a personality thing. I mean, my my personality is not for everyone. It's not. And not everyone's personality is for me, you know. Um, I don't uh, usually care much for channels that will that are super negative. Not like my videos are always so cheerful, but what I'm saying is super negative in the way that they're going to trash talk other people, make fun of the way they look, uh, call them names, that kind of thing. Like I just, uh, I, I, that constant negativity, that kind of stuff. Um, I just don't like it. And yeah, some of it's funny, but it's kind of like, um, you know how, how Howard Stone's radio show used to be like that. Like I've never liked his show H him as a person when he shows us his real self, that's the Howard Stern that I like the Howard Stern radio personality. Not for me, not for me. Um, and I'm probably not for him and that's okay. Like not everybody is going to be for everybody. That's why we have so many different personalities, uh, and such. Um, and mostly I just want to have fun, uh, and educate people and be here to support people that have a chronic illness, uh, does not have to be small fiber neuropathy, but I'm definitely here to help guide you through that because that is what I have. And so I would have more to say on the subject than say diabetes, which I don't have or any other, uh, chronic illness. Um, I would not be able to walk with you through specifically those illness illnesses, but the invisible chronic illness slash pain condition. Absolutely. Because 
basically at the end of the day we're all spoonies right which is what they call people like us that have so many spoons to use and then that's it um so what was it i feel like there was one other thing i was trying to tell you God, it looks so pretty outside like it's a fall day because it's windy. It's never windy here. It is never windy in Texas in the summer. Usually in Texas in the summer, there is no movement, like zero. Um, but th there's a bush over here. I don't know if I would call it a bush. It's the, what are those? They're not orchids, but they're like these big, freaking plant things that bloom I don't know and there's this just all these long skinny leaf like things that are sticking out and they're all just blowing in the wind and I'm looking and I'm seeing like tree branches and shit just blowing everywhere and I'm like whoa is it like my, it's telling my brain that it's like cooler outside like fall the beginning of fall in Texas is like the middle of the day will be like low 80s but breezy or, or something like that uh, or mid to high 70s but with a breeze there's a coolness in the air you know and it's like oh my god we're finally have been taken out of the oven we're on the cooling rack we can breathe now that just makes me want sugar cookies. Way to go. Way to go. Shit. You know, those crust, crunchy, crispity sugar cookies, you know? My mom always made them crunchy. Soft is pretty awesome. Soft and chewy. But sometimes you just want a crunchy sugar cookie or just sugar. I know. I'm the worst. What can I say? I have found that... Um, and I think I've talked about this before. I have found that since I um, have a chronic illness, I'm very bad at denying myself things now because the child in me, right, that still lives in me, I, I believe that all of us still have our little selves living inside us somewhere living our life jointly with us. We're making all the decisions, but uh, for me, I make a lot of decisions based on um, what she wants. Little, little Heather, I hear a lot from my little be because of the DID diagnosis and, you know, being in therapy and just like, I've always known her, you know, she's always been there. Uh, and because like the childhood that I had, I was deprived of certain things. And now as an adult, you know, as a mom, you're deprived of certain things, but you give those things up gladly because you want to be a mother. Uh, and I, that's all I ever wanted was to be a mom. And so I got to do that. Um, three and a half times. I have four kids. One of them is my stepdaughter. Uh, but I, I think of her as mine. Like I have, uh, I say I have four kids, but I only birthed three. Um, so I have a heart baby and then three regular babies. I actually have a few heart babies because of my, um, boys old school friends they're just here in my heart they have my heart they're so precious and they've been around forever like since they were babies so um but I'm really bad at denying myself things because I feel like you know you your childhood you had sh you know you were denied shit of course when you were uh, a mom you were denied shit and so I finally like when I knew, like, okay, Bailey's growing up, she's going to be out of the house, like, I started making plans. Me and my husband started making plans 
there were so many things we wanted to do. Like, we wanted to go... If I start crying, I swear to God, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> because I do not feel sad at all. Um, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, it happens when you're uh, going through, when you're menopausal and you're hormonal and you're a mama and you're a grandmama and the feelings, you have all the feels. So anyway, uh, what was I saying? I was talking about something. Shit. Oh God, it was right there. Oh, like you start making all these plans, like, when your kids are, like, say, 16, and you know when they're 18, like, you're done. Like, when they graduate high school, you are done. You never stop being their parent. You never stop being there for them. You never stop telling them what to do if they still live with you, right? Like, hey, do the dishes. Hey, scoop the litter. Like, even though they know, hey, this is what I do here, I'm still going to tell them to skip the fucking litter. Like, just... And scoop it. Anyway, that was a little side rant. Um, but, uh, you know, I had made plans. Uh, my husband and I wanted to um, learn dancing. Like, maybe I would love to learn, like, swing dancing. I wanted to go boot scooting. I mean, we live in Texas, and I have... I've done the two-step before. Not that I know how to two-step. I don't. But uh, the guy two-stepped with was just a dude. Like, he wasn't my boyfriend or anything. But he was so good at it that he was able to lead me so well that I looked like I knew how to do it. Do you know what I mean? It was weird. I He just had me spinning around that dance floor and I looked like I knew exactly what I was doing. I had no clue. I was just like, if you took my picture, I was probably going, so, but those are the things we wanted to do, you know, like reconnect as a couple, um, and find things that we love to do and that interest, interested us. Um, and I, I wanted to do all that stuff, you know, the, the paint, the wine and the painting thing and the. And of course that stuff we could have done uh, when we had kids, especially when they were older. Uh, they could have stayed, you know, but I had a divorce. So when I had my boys, I had my boys and I wanted to be with my boys. I didn't want to go line dancing or whatever, right? Um, and if you do get a night off, you're exhausted. You want to take advantage, right? You want to go to the bathroom alone. You might sit in there for five hours just to say, hey, I'm in the fucking bathroom by myself. Take a nice long bath, read a book, do whatever without being interrupted every five minutes with mama, mama. Mama, Mama, oh my God, and it's like the minute you go in there, the minute you go in there, you didn't even see them behind you, you thought you snuck off, okay, and you were like telling your husband like, Shh. now, it occurs to me now that the minute you went to the bathroom, the husband could have been like, hey, mommy's in the bathroom, go get her. That just occurred to me. I would hope not. And if any of you guys are doing that to your wives, stop it. Because we deserve bathroom alone time. You guys get it. They don't come after you. They come after us. Um, that's just another part, hard part about being a mama. Like, they want you. Even if you don't breastfeed, they want you. Um, through my daughter-in-law, I'm definitely, like, seeing a whole different way of mothering. She is such a good mom. But, I mean, in terms of, like, breastfeeding, because I, I did not breastfeed. Uh, given my past with abuse, um, 
the first go around with my first son, I was just so uncomfortable with it. I was younger. I was 21 when I had him, 20 when I got pregnant, and I just was so uncomfortable. It felt so wrong. I just was like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, so the second time around, oh, you better die. There's a wasp out there that is bumbling around. Like, and you know how they do that? They kind of like this, and that's why I hate them even more because it's like, okay, just pick a fucking lane so I can go the opposite direction, right? Anyway, uh, no, he's alive. Shit. But he's bumbling. He's really bumbling a lot. Well, let's hope he dies before I have to go inside. Anyway, so, um, but I have a whole new respect for breastfeeding moms because I did not know, uh, my daughter-in-law breastfed, I mean, I don't know, till they were like a year and a half or whatever, but the, the babies, like, they, that's like mama extreme. Do you know what I mean? Like my babies already were all over me. And like when they were older and they wanted uh, a cup, right, of juice, no one could pour the juice but me, right? Like I'd be like in the middle of reading a book or something, just, just trying to have a minute to myself. And my baby boy would be like, I want juice, you know. Okay, well, can you ask Daddy? You know, Daddy's in the kitchen. Can you go ask Daddy for a cup of juice? <gasps> I want you! And then they start crying and the whining, and it's like... And, of course, my... This is my ex-husband. He would be like, no, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm just going to pour the juice. Well, my... <laughs> my son, his nickname is Bear, was... He would not have it. He was not having it. Um... If anybody but me poured that juice, he would not drink it. Stubborn. He was so stubborn, which of course he gets from me. Um, so I would just pour it because he had his cry you could use literally to at a hostage situation, you know, where they'll do stuff to try to make them uncomfortable. So they'll come out of whatever place they have them themselves locked in. They'll try to use noise to get them out. They could just, if I had his cry recorded, it's like a, uh, that kind of thing. And I'm sorry, even, even just that was annoying. I know. And I apologize. Uh, but at like 11 decimal, right? Like, or dec decibel, is that what it is? I don't know. But if you've seen, um, it's a fake band. What's it called? Spinal Tap. If you've seen the movie Spinal Tap, you know what this goes to 11 means. Or it's 11, right? Just go watch Spinal Tap. It's a funny movie. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? I think I'm just talking about kids and just, anyway. Um, you just... You know, when you were a, a mom, you didn't have a moment to yourself. And so I was really looking forward to all the things that I could do, all the things I could do for myself, all the things I could learn for myself that maybe wouldn't be hobbies that Kelly would be interested in. Then there would be hobbies he and I could do together. Um, and I was really looking forward to that. And, and like the minute she graduated the the fall before she graduated is when I was physically feeling my best that's when I told you guys like the me before I was diagnosed like and then I told renamed it because it that just being a clean freak that's not all that I was about at all and I think I feel like that video, that video made it sound like, oh, I just cared about cleaning my room. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I think I became obsessed with it because I 
finally had the time to do it. I didn't have to help Bailey with her homework anymore. She had some learning deficits. Um, and she, much like I did, much like Kelly did, needed a lot of help with her homework, which I was fine and happy to um, assist with. But it took a lot of my time after work away. So by, by the time we were done with her homework, because they gave they give a lot of homework, okay, Pre, pre-COVID, pre um, and you spend all night doing it. And there, there would be times I wouldn't go to bed till one in the morning, and then mama had to get up and go to work, okay, so, um, so I was really just looking forward to kind of just having my time to myself, and by the time school got out, I was, I started seeing doctors because that's when my foot first started hurting me uh, because I remember um, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk all these steps like and do all this walking. What is it? I don't trust any these creatures out here. I know they're all waiting to get me. Um, <clears throat> hold on. I'm trying to get this water back here. Because I figure I can use this to water my plants. This is going to be difficult. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Hold on. We can do this. We got no, 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 no. Don't break. Don't break. Don't break. Hi. We're doing it. Okay. You know when you do things because you think it'll save energy, but then you realize that was really stupid because I probably spent more energy trying to do it that way? Yeah. But I got these things of water because I wanted to try them. These little, because I, I need, I don't drink enough water, guys. Mostly that's because if I drank the amount of water I was supposed to drink, I would be in the bathroom. 24 7 okay because I already feel like I have to pee all the time and I only drink about one bottle a day and I know that's not good that's not nearly enough water but I, I'm up all night it, you know having to go to the bathroom it's it's awful but anyway um but yeah right when I was getting my mommy freedoms uh things started to go down pretty quickly and uh, yeah that just sucked it sucks it sucks man it really pisses me off I had a lot of plans um, and boot scooting you know learning the two-step and all that I don't have the energy I don't just doing that thing that I just did either way like either getting out of the car and getting it out that way I would have spent more time in the heat but then also would risk more wasp stinging time <laughs> which is a factor that I always in my head People may not know I'm working it out, but yeah, I'm working it out always in my head as I am right now as I'm talking to you. I see them hovering and waiting for me and I'm thinking about how am I going to do this? So yeah, it sucks. But um, yeah, all, all of the plants that we had, you know, turned into now... Netflix binging and Kelly could stu still do all of these things he would just have to do them without me but you know the one good thing that has come out of this I guess is that he is finally embracing the going out with your friends stuff because when we were together 
he just wasn't into that. It's, a, it's almost like he can only f focus on one big relationship at a time. Um, and uh, so he didn't go out with guy friends. He didn't really... He had guy friends, like the the guy friend he's going to go hang out with this weekend. Um, we, I've, we've both known him since junior high, uh, great guy. And he's going to go, I think it's a game, I think it's a fight that they're going to do or watch or whatever. Mm. I went once, um, when I felt better. It was a lot closer to my diagnosis. As the years have gone by, it's gotten worse. Uh, and I've gotten more homebound. I think mostly just because I did try the, I'm going to keep a normal life. I'm just, I'm going to continue living my life and nothing's going to change that. Um, but it did. <laughs> it did change my life because you decide, I, I can feel like shit at home and be in comfortable pants and uh, not have too much stimulation going on where there's all these noises and all this talking and all this whatever in my face. And oh, guess what? Now I have a migraine. <laughs> and I have to make everybody leave early because of me. Um, I don't want to do that, you know? It's not good for me. It's not good for the people that go with me that actually want to go to a thing, you know? Um, I missed my son's graduation dinner, my bear's graduation dinner. Um, we were on our way and I started having uh, diaphragm spasms is what I call them. But they, they are so painful that it feels like you're having a heart attack. Um, yeah, God, it's the worst. And it's the kind of pain that just wraps all the way around. I've talked about it before. Your your back, right, right here, all the way around, but through your back as well. That those those pain points right there, the same place in your back, are the most concentrated pain. I finally figured out a way to get it to go away pretty quickly, um, and I don't have to go to the emergency room anymore for it because. It, it it's awful it's awful and the problem with that is that the pain can come on very suddenly and go very suddenly but then it will do this the the rest of the day it's gonna go up here it's gonna spike much like uh, labor pains right well I definitely don't want to do that at a dinner okay uh, because it's not fun to have everyone being like worried about you. I just want them to enjoy their time. That day was about bear, not me having an episode, having a flare, whatever. But I, um, that incident, I took bears opportunity to have his mom and his stepdad and his, uh, sister there to celebrate. I took that away and I took away uh, my husband and my daughter's opportunity to celebrate as well with him. I mean, I didn't, it's something I did on purpose, but because I'm the sick one uh, and it just feels like shit being that person, the fun ruiner, you know, like, and I know all of you know what I'm talking about. And so you get to this place where, and I guess it goes back to the chronic illness guilt. I think everything probably goes back to that where, um, because you don't want to ruin anything, you just become a very isolated, singular type of person where, at least for me, um, because I don't want to, I absolutely refuse to impact, to have my 
shit impact anyone else or as little as it can like clearly it's a it's impacted Kelly like Uh, he can't have, I know, he can't have the life that he wanted right now in our 50s, you know, where we thought we would still feel relatively well enough to go and do things. And up until this diagnosis, I felt great. I felt like I'd always felt just me. Um, not slowed. I had, didn't feel like I had slowed down, you know, everything felt great. And then boom. Um, and I feel like having to go through this with me, it's aged Kelly in a way. I think he would have aged differently, slower if he didn't have to walk through this with me. I can start crying about it. Let's find, you know, let's just find things to talk about that are going to make you cry and be upset. Yeah. Oh, that is not the point of this. I hate being a crier. Are you got any of you criers? I hate being a crier. I get it from my mom. She's a crier. I think it runs in the family. I think it's a genetic thing. Like, I never used to, and she never used to, and then when she uh, hit menopause, just, and then it never stopped. Just like waterworks, constantly. Same with me. In fact, my nickname, Kelly's nickname for me used to be Conan, because apparently Conan, you know, the warrior, uh, would never cry. Like, he would never show emotions or feelings, because, you know, he had to be a big, strong man, whatever. And so Kelly would joke and call me Conan, because I just was like... Uh, you know, like, I just didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't a crier. I had feelings. I was emotional. I was the same way I am now. I was still very empathic and all of that, but I just wasn't a crier. And now anything can make me cry. If you say something sweet, if I see something sad, if I see a squirrel, then I'm worried that it's going to cross the street. Or if I see a dead one on the road, or a bunny, or a raccoon, or a dog, or a, you know, there are some animals that I'm prejudiced against, like, um, possums, I'm sorry, uh, any possum owners out there, I just, like, I don't want them to be dead, obviously, um, they're just ugly, they just look like really big, 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 big rats. And I think the movie, um, The Princess Bride also ruined them for me because they had those creatures that were in that forest, forest of despair or something like that. And they were called the rodents of unusual size or something. I can't. I don't know. Go watch The Princess Bride. It is a great movie. It's so good. It's so cute. It was one of my most favorite movies of all time. It still is. Uh, it was so whimsical. Um, go watch it. It's it's really good. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I was going somewhere with something and then... I think my brain forgot where I was going with it. And so here we are. I don't even know what to title this video other than random rants because I, I'm, I think I feel like I've been all over the place. So I have touched on a few topics. So hopefully some of you find it helpful information. Um, but feel free to, you know, um, leave a question and and as I've always said if you just want to email me privately because you have a question maybe you don't want to put on the channel that's t totally fine hundred percent understand email me at nani banana 2020 at gmail.com nani banana 2020 at gmail.com and I'm not gonna spell banana out because I suck at spelling banana and it's the fruit right? So I feel like you guys know how to spell banana. Um, 
I sound ridiculous when I try to spell it out. So, and it's Nani is spelled N-O-N-I, and then it's banana, 2020, at Gmail. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go inside, finish my breakfast. Um, t- I got to, I have to take all my meds. I haven't taken any of my meds. Ah, oh, shoot. Balls. I have scripts at. I have prescriptions at Tom Thumb. I can't go. I just can't. Bailey gets off at 3. Maybe Kelly will pick them up for me. I just can't do it. Like. Yeah. I think I'm done. Anyway. (laughs) Yay. I think I forgot to say this at the beginning. So please um, leave a like if you like this video. Leave a thumbs up. Um... And, uh, if you don't leave a comment, let me know why. Please be nice and respectful though. Um, uh, please subscribe if you are watching the video and you find that you like it or you find this information useful. Uh, please subscribe. And I did not mention, I forgot to mention that we made it to... Are we 36? Hmm. I, th- I feel like I remember seeing the number 36. I feel like we're at 36 subscribers. Yeah, we were at 35. I can't remember. Anyway, we're at 36 now. So the new goal is 40 subscribers. So... Let's get to 40 subscribers. See if we can do that. Um, We'll just keep making little micro goals. uh, Because I just feel like when you're living in the spoon world, that's what you got to do. You got to do micro goals, man. Um, Because otherwise you feel like, at least for me, uh, you feel like you're constantly failing. If you have a micro goal, like... Hey, I'm going to get up these stairs. And then you do it. You're like, I'm a badass bitch. You know what I mean? Like, because it is badass when you have a chronic illness and your legs don't work right and you can't feel your feet. Getting up those stairs with with all your shit in your hands and not falling down is a miracle. And it means... That you're pretty badass because it takes a, a skill to, um, and you have to push through, right? Like, you know, most people when they're going up some stairs, they don't have to like push through the pain, but I do. Like the minute I go to step up, it's excruciating um, because my legs feel like um they have 50 pound weights on my feet. They're just very hard to lift. They're just so heavy and painful. Like the muscles that, uh, the thigh muscle, which is a huge muscle is in a lot of pain. And what sucks is that the longer I have this illness, the more it's affecting, like my joints never used to hurt me. And now my joints are in play. It used to be just my muscles and now it's my joints. So that's adding to the pain level, you know? Cause I didn't realize that that could hurt that much, but, uh, my mornings are pretty excruciating. The pain wakes me up and, um, it's pretty bad. So Anyway, I'm starting to zone out, which is what I do when I'm really start hurting and everything. Everything's starting to hurt because I've been in the same position for a while. So I'm going to go. Um, please wish me luck for my interview. Um, but that's next Tuesday. So I suspect I'll be talking to you guys before then. Um, but still, wish me 
wish me luck every day if you can send out like a little positive vibe because uh, this this is a real job real benefits PTO um, insurance like uh, we still don't have insurance um, and um, because I haven't had anything like that so far. I wanted to tell you guys about this one company that uh, was wanting to interview me, but I don't think I'm going to go anywhere. But unfortunately, I do not have time to go into that right now because my body is calling the shots here. And my body says, no, bitch, you're done. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um and a beautiful evening and I will talk to you soon okay have a good one Mwah. oh wait wait hold on I wanted to say thank you to the new subscribers because we did have 33 we now have 36 um, so we gained three more subscribers so directly to you three new subscribers because I don't always find out who they are like their name or whatever I can't always see that like it doesn't show up and then when it does show up I don't know if I'm allowed to use your name I don't want to do any of that without permission because I respect privacy and stuff like that so I'll just say hey new am I saying user I think I just said new users like what does that even mean New viewers, viewers, not users. I'm sorry, I apologize. Oh God, let's do that over. Retake. Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you to the three new viewers that we have. Um, thank you for joining our little community. I do appreciate it. Um, and yes, it's always this frantic and all over the place so if you enjoy that if you're here for that I got you covered and if you're not and you feel like this is not for me I'm not gonna be mad at you you know we're not all gonna be into everything right so anyway that's it have a beautiful beautiful day I will talk to you soon okay mm -hmm.